In 1945, at Nuremberg's Hall of Justice, Allied powers gathered, seeking accountability. Today, courtroom 600 is one of the most visited sites in the city. You come to the building, you walk through the door, and you come into this courtroom, it really hits you. This is the place where international justice was spoken for the first time. In the wake of World War II's devastation, the world sought answers and found them in Nuremberg. The accused were sitting here, people like Hermann Göring right here in that corner. Next to him, Rudolf Hess, Ribbentrop, Albert Speer, Jules Streicher, people from the armed forces. With the world watching, the Allies knew a fair trial was critical, and so they methodically, in painstaking detail, laid out layer upon layer of evidence. After almost one year, they came to Judgment Day. Twelve received a death sentence, three acquittals, and the rest received long-term imprisonment or life-term imprisonment, and were sent then to this specific prison in Berlin Spandau. Ultimately, the trials created a powerful framework for judging future wars, as Nuremberg was a radical departure in the method of assessing responsibility and assigning relevant punishment. Normally they say the government acted and not the people inside. This was the first time where they said, no, not a government acts, the people are acting. And that people within a government were made accountable. Without Nuremberg, there would be no UN criminal high court and trials against people in Rwanda, against Milosevic from Yugoslavia. And this makes it a very important place. Perhaps the chief US prosecutor, Robert H. Jackson, said it best. If we can cultivate in the world the idea that aggressive war making is the way to the prisoner's dock rather than the way to honors, we will have accomplished something towards making peace more secure. <laughs>